So the React team just announced a new feature coming up in React called Hooks. Now everyone is super hyped about this, including me, and the goal of this or the purpose of these things are to be able to use all of the stuff you can do in the class components and functional components. So being able to use the lifecycle functions and also to be able to use the state. And so I kind of wanted to share my thoughts after checking it out. And if you haven't already, they already wrote some documentation on it that is just fantastic. Um, there's eight sections here. I read through all of them and there's a ton of material on this and it looks like there's a ton of potential for the hooks and everything that you can do with them. So this is what it looks like and this is what it looks like if you come to the intro page. And here's the first thing that you see and this is how you do state now. So one thing that's kind of interesting is you actually kind of create one state item at a time. So here's just a number. And the other thing is some people are wondering why are they doing destructuring with arrays and not objects? Um, I thought that was a little odd at first as well, but it makes sense once you see more about how hooks work. So this is just a single, you can think of this as a single um, object or value called count in the state. And then if you want to do multiple, um, they have other examples of that. So this is kind of, I thought this was kind of interesting. This is how you do multiple um, state values. So here you have age, fruit, and to-dos, which is interesting. This left thing is the value of it, and the right thing is how you update it. So there's no longer like this.setState, where you just update individual values. This seems slightly clunkier um, than just creating an object that stores the state, and then being able to call this.setState. But I don't think I mind it. I think this is pretty usable and I don't think I would mind it. And this makes more sense why we're destructuring with an array now. So it's a little bit easier to rename all of these things than uh, using a object if I had to rename and give them new names for each one. Um, but overall, I think this is pretty neat. And then they also have, so this is for the state. And the other thing is your lifecycle functions. So to be able to do that, they created one called use effect. Um, and what this guy does is it runs after every single render. And for this, you can do some component did mount stuff, component did update stuff, and all your lifecycle methods. Like if your component is going to unmount, you can return a function. Uh, and then that gets called. This seems pretty interesting. Um, and there's ways to filter it where it only runs on mount, only runs on update or whatnot. And also can be memoized if only you have it run when things change. Um, which is pretty cool, and I like this. I think I like this better than the lifecycle methods on classes. Um, and in general, I see myself using these components probably the majority of the time over classes. Um, I haven't really tried them out much yet, but that's kind of my gut instinct with seeing them. Uh, and then also, there's more uh, hooks that you can add to just the use effect and use state. Here's all of them, and it looks like there's a lot of potential to even create more. So you can create your own custom hooks with these as well. But here are the ones that they actually create for you. And the one that I find really interesting, it has a lot of potential, especially for optimization, is this use memo. So this guy you can also use um, for creating, here's a little example that they showed that I thought was pretty cool. So they use it twice and you can have it memoized based off of different values. So here, this on the very right is what you use and it checks to see if that value changes. Um, and you can pass in multiple values. But being able to memoize the actual React children seems really cool and seems really helpful to be able to do. And so I think that has a ton of use cases and also will be able to be used for optimizing a lot of things, and I like that a lot. Um, and the other thing that I really liked about this is I've been using render props and higher order components to do similar things and to compose stuff together. And I was wondering what's going on with that. And of course, the answer then FAQ, they have a great FAQ. They answer basically all the questions that I had about hooks. Um, and basically, yeah, most cases you can actually just use hooks um, in a lot of places and it actually simplifies it. So you don't have multiple components now because a lot of times you'll have just a rendered prop and all its purpose is, is to pass some props to the next component and that's it. So I'm going to be able to pretty much compose stuff a lot simpler and not have to create a bunch of extra components. And now I'm just going to be able to create these custom hooks and be able to pass them. Well, you don't even pass them as a prop, right? You can just plug them right in, which is super cool. And so I see myself using these primarily 
And I think we're going to be a new level of being able to share code between components and be able to share state and that sort of thing. And then we're also going to see a lot of libraries adapt this. So that's what I'm excited about as well is here we have possibly, so depending on what libraries do, they're just suggesting they would be able to do this. Um, so we could be seeing a use Redux or use router for React Router to have these hooks for popular libraries. I'm excited to see this with GraphQL as well. So like use Apollo or use Apollo State, um, that sort of stuff, and be able to hook into and run my mutations and queries. So I think this has a ton of potential, and I'm super excited to try this out and to use this in my React components. I'm curious what you guys are thinking. What do you like about it?